You are listening to Off the Cuff. Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to the show, and thank you for tuning in to WLXU 93.9 LPFM Lexington. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the hottest talk radio show in Lexington. You can check us out on our Facebook live stream at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks, or if you are out of the Lexington area, you can download the WLXU app on your smartphone device. Amber Turner is in the studio with me. Amber, how are you? I am good. How are you? Doing fantastic. I got new headphones on, as you can see. I'm very envious. They're Beats, and I don't know a lot about headphones, but I looked at three brands. I looked at Beats, I looked at Sony, and I looked at Bose, and the guy at Best Buy told me that these were the ones to get. They look really nice. Do they? They do. The black and gold. Well, you said they smell like leather, so I'm curious to smell them. It smells like a new car. (laughs) These headphones, they really do smell like a new car. But everybody, thank you for joining us. Those watching at Facebook Live, thank you for watching us. This is radio broadcast number 11. Just a couple announcements here. Next week is the 4th of July. So next Thursday is July 4th. The station, WLXU, Lexington Community Radio, will be closed. So what you will hear next week, you will hear us next week but it will be a replay show. So probably what you're hearing now is going to be what you hear next week. Because I went back and forth, Amber. I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to do a pre-record, but there's just something about doing live radio. I just wasn't interested in it. I I can feel that. I really wasn't. I I was thinking to myself, yeah, we could go in here, we could do a a pre-record, but the whole point of getting into radio was to legitimately get into radio and do live radio broadcast. I don't think you'd be able to throw your zingers at me if we were pre-recording and get an honest response out of me. No, because being live, and only people who have ever went live can vouch for this, it is a totally different ballgame. It is a completely different feeling when you... Turn on the microphone and you're live. Well, whenever I hear you hit the buttons, because there's a a click that's made whenever he turns our mics on, and that's when you know it's go time. (laughs) It's like getting in that slingshot. You know that old ride they used to put you in when you heard the little click, you know you were getting ready to spring up? Yeah, there was, you couldn't stop. There was no stopping. There was no stopping. You were already locked in. Yep. Well, you have it locked to WLXU 93.9 right now, and we have a new station manager. We have talked about this for a while. We've talked about this off and on a couple times about us getting a new boss here at the station. Well, it's official. We do have a new general manager here at the station, and I'm hearing clicking, buzzing noises again. Are you hearing it? Mm, I, need, I am. Okay, I need all phones, and I need all electronic devices to be away from... Do I hear it anymore? No, we're good. Okay. okay, yeah, so we do have a new boss. I think we might have seen him when we were coming in, but I was intimidated, so I didn't say anything. Really? You think yeah. that was him? I think so. Uh, I think he's supposed to start next week is what Victor said, so I'll be on vacation, you'll be on vacation, so we'll get to meet him when we come back. But have a little anxiety about it. You know, whenever you get a new boss, it's new management, new rules. But I think it'll be cool. As long as he just comes in here and lets me wear Beavis and Butthead shirts and, and Macho Man Randy Savage <laughs> I love shirts, that that's your only concern. I'll be okay. Is that you want to wear these animated shirts. Yeah, I, I will be okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a very, very special day. And the reason it is special is because today, June the 27th, ladies and gentlemen, it is... Amber's birthday. And Amber, you were 31 today. Thank you for telling everybody. Well, I, I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. Nothing to be ashamed of. You're 31 years old. I am. Same age as me. How are you feeling right now? Um, well, I've already taken a nap, and it's just now 4 o'clock, and um, I feel pretty old. <laughs> You were taking a nap today? I was taking a nap today. Yeah. Middle of the day. So, do you feel any different besides feeling old? Do you feel wiser? Do you feel like that you've put some more age on you? How how are you feeling at age 31? Because take it from somebody who has been 31 for almost a year now. It's not that bad. I really do enjoy the age. It's it's 
It really is. It's been enlightening. You know, I've got a couple of things going on in my life. You know, I am back in school full time and I am not in the professional working career. So, you know, that kind of had me feeling some kind of way. And, you know, obviously I am a year older than what I was this time last year. But um, all in all, I think it's okay. I think it's been, I think it's been fun. You know, I've got to celebrate with, you know, my friends and my family today. And I get to sit here with, you know, two of the men that I love the most in this world. So... I think it's a good day. It is, and it's it's awesome that you're 31. I couldn't have asked for a better person to sit here, co-host the show with me, and just to be a genuine friend in my life. You're trying to make me cry on the air again, aren't you? Absolutely not, but it's your day, and I think it should be celebrated. I think that this is your day. We're going to dedicate this broadcast to you. Uh, what I like about being 30, and a lot of people always hear negative things about the age of 30. I always hear people say, Oh, 30 years old, I feel so old. Well, 30 is an age where people start to take you serious. I have been getting presented with more opportunities just by turning 30 than I ever did in my 20s. And I always wondered why that was, and I honestly think it was the professionalism. People thought that because I'm 30, I think they know that when you turn 30, You've, you've got some years on you. You've got some experience under your belt. You've had some personal growth, so you're usually kind of out of, you know, your your immature stage yeah. for the most part. Now, I mean, we do know some people who are our age that are very much immature. Yeah. But the thing about being in your 30s is there is no room for error. I think in your 20s, it's that time to experiment. It's that time to have fun. It's that time to mess up. But when you get in your 30s, you're almost at that point to where you don't have a lot of room nope. to mess up. Nope, because now you got a lot of things you can lose. <laughs> you you absolutely do. But uh, you're you're now an, an older woman. Oh, jeez. Not a little girl anymore. <laughs> Did you just quote Britney Spears on the air? <laughs> I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe unintentionally. But uh, there was probably a lot of things that um, when you were a kid that your parents told you that now you can look back and say, my parents were lying. That was not true. Oh, my goodness. I mean, think about all the things that our parents used to tell us. And we grew up for the longest time thinking it was to be the truth. For instance, did your parents ever tell you that turning the car lamp on in your car was illegal? Uh, and I actually thought that up until like maybe two to three years ago. Yeah. That same, it was illegal. Same here. And I still self consciously self consciously think that it is illegal and that I'm gonna get pulled over if the and lights get, turn on. Do you get mad if somebody else in your car turns it on? I get mad. I'm furious. It, I do because my mom used to get furious. Yep. And it's just rubbed off on me. But that is one lie I couldn't believe. I was like, that is totally not true. And I believed it my entire life. But it was I think our parents used to just tell us stuff like that because they didn't like it. They didn't want to deal with it. So they just told us it was illegal and they'd go to jail if we did anything like that. But some of the things they come up with were just so absurd. And I don't know why, as a child, we ever believed. Like, did you ever hear that if you tickled a baby, you'd make it stutter? Ha! <laughs> you would make it stutter. You'd they'd, make it stutter. They'd say, don't tickle that baby. You're going to make it stutter. Yeah, you're going to make him stutter. And I used to think that getting... I, no. I will take it as far as this. They would say not to tickle baby's feet because it would make yep, them stutter. It would stutter. make them stutter. So still, I'm afraid to tickle baby's feet. Well, did you ever, did you ever like just mess around and cross your eyes? Like yeah. you just mess around crossing your eyes. Yeah. And then somebody would walk in, your granny'd walk in and be like, you better quit doing that. Your eyes going to get stuck like that. Or, or you swallow gum and they tell you it's going to stay in your system for at least seven years. Or you're going to swallow a watermelon seed and you're going to grow a watermelon. I know that to be totally false, though, because when I, I can swallow gum like I did just a while ago in the studio. <laughs> and tonight when I go and I have my bowel movement. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to be able to see that gum. Do you look at it? Yeah, shouldn't everybody? I think in order to keep a healthy body, I think everybody should turn around and look at their feces. I mean, the scientist in me sometimes wants to always. I feel like sometimes I'll call my husband in to do an examination, but I didn't think that normal people done that. So I feel a little bit better. Guys are weird. I don't know if girls do this, but sometimes guys will take pictures of their bowel movements and show other guys. Like, uh, oh, take a look at this big turd, dude. I just dropped in right here in the toilet. I'm I'm pretty sure I can say I have never taken a photo. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't I'm either. I, I honest to God haven't either. I think it's gross, and I get so mad when people send that kind of stuff to me. But it is pretty gross. There are so many things that our parents, though, lie to us about. I mean, 
We've got the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Oh, but the you're missing the best one. Th- but those, but those are what the best one. And I actually was going to say it uh, when we were at the pool. We we got to go to the pool finally this week, which was a good time. Um, did you ever hear that you got to wait thirty minutes after you eat before you can get in the pool? I, yes, is That's that not, false? Is no, that false? That is completely false. You're lying. I, if I'm lying, I'm dying, and I ain't dying on my birthday. I used to, I won't. Whenever I eat, I'll refuse to get in the pool because I think my legs are going to cramp no, up and I'm so, going to go underwater. No, so behind it is they were trying to insinuate that when you are digesting your food, your your body does want to draw more of your blood circulation toward your internal organs because yeah. you've got a lot going on. Yeah. So I guess the, behind it, I guess the reasoning behind it was they thought, oh, well, if you pull all the blood out of your extremities, you can't use them. They won't work. What about when parents told you not to touch a frog because your hands were going to get warts? You know, I actually thought that all the way up until I started working in labs that warts on your hands were from frogs they're not what are they they're from? Not, it's human papillomavirus hpv that's what it is wait a minute so you're saying that if you got warts on your hands that's hpv it's hpv what? it's hpv that is not but well, i don't from picking, have, look, from picking up a big croak i'm not frog. trying to defend myself and i'll show the camera there are no warts on these <laughs> on these hands so <laughs> but i see people i know people with warts on their hands you telling me that H- that they HPV. have hpv so is that guaranteed that it could be nothing else? It's HPV if they have warts on their hands? I'm pretty sure that if you've got warts anywhere on your body, it is HPV. What about a, like a little kid? Then they, it's been passed to them because I, 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 think, I think that um, HPV has the ability to pass the placenta barrier. I think to a certain degree, yeah. Which is, you know, the placenta is what you know keeps baby intact in mommy's belly. I think it has the ability to cross that barrier and uh, infect your fetus. But then you also got to think, you know, HPV is in your uh, nether regions, and guess where baby's coming from? Nether regions. Did your parents ever tell you that if you popped your knuckles, you were going to get arthritis? Friends don't let friends pop fingers. Or did they ever tell you that if you popped your knuckles, they were going to swell up and you wasn't ever going to be able to wear a wedding ring? No, no, I did used to hear that it would it would set up arthritis, but I've never heard the wedding ring. And, so that's, that's a new one on me. I, I, that, I think that was always self-conscious, subconsciously my parents trying to push me towards marriage. Maybe. Don't pop your fingers or you're never going to get married, Adam. You ain't going to get your ring on. You ain't going to be able to get your ring on. That's, <laughs> that's, I'm going to use that excuse as to why I'm not married because I popped my knuckles my entire life and I'm not able to fit a ring on my finger. But... There, <laughs> But yeah, I was telling you, you know, parents, obviously they tell you there's a Santa Claus. There's not. I was devastated, by the way, when I found out there was no Santa Claus. Uh, the Tooth Fairy. Did your parents ever, like, how did that go for you, the whole Tooth Fairy? When you lost a tooth, did you stick your tooth under the pillow and they would give you money? I did. How now, much did you get? I used to get maybe a dollar. I think one time my, my dad messed up and put a tin underneath there because I feel like he was, like, anxiously trying to get it back from me. <laughs> He realized he put a 10 instead of a 1. he put a 10 instead of a 1. I don't blame him. (laughs) So, um, yeah, no, Tooth Fairy was definitely a big thing for me. And I remember when I found out that the Tooth Fairy wasn't real. And I remember where I was. Where? I was in the second grade. I was in the second grade at Beaver Creek Elementary. And I remember I was losing a tooth. And I was so excited. And I was like, man, I'm going to put this underneath my pillow. And the female sitting directly beside of me, who was very rude, looked at me and said, that's stupid. That ain't real. And I went home and I started questioning my grandma. I was like, Granny, is a tooth fairy not real? Yeah. And I think she was just like, sis, no. I mean, like, honest, honestly, the Easter Bunny, too. I used to imagine when I was a kid, a little Easter Bunny just bouncing around, dropping baskets off. At everybody's house. I feel like That's what I, I thought. No, I feel like I didn't believe that. But now Santa Claus, yes, that was devastating. No, I really did. I, so I don't know why I thought that. I'm I, curious as to how you found out Santa Claus wasn't real. Well, it. Well, I'll tell you what. I think everybody has that defining moment when they realize that Santa Claus isn't real. And uh, one day I woke up and I saw my family that always come the night before Christmas to put together all of my stuff. From Santa in the morning, I walked in on them putting it together. Okay. And I think by that point, it was kind of like, does he know? Does he not know? But And I was kind of like that, too. Is it real? Is it not real? But I realized after that that it definitely wasn't real. Now, how old were you? I don't know. Like, nine. Oh, so I, like, full-on knew you by then. Yeah. You still believed in Santa Claus at nine? Didn't you? No. 
That's horrible. No, I, I'm pretty sure when I was in like the first grade, my mother just took my brother and I to Walmart and just gave us a hundred dollars and was like, buy something. I'm mm-hmm. pretty, I'm pretty sure that that was how I was like, okay. Well, it is Amber's birthday, everybody, and it is time for our first commercial break. And we got more, lots more to talk about right after these words. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in the studio with me. This week was a very sad week because... On June 25th, 2019, it marked 10 years since the King of Pop was found dead in his Hollywood home. Michael Jackson, he died June the 25th, 2009. I still remember where I was when I found out the news that Michael Jackson died. I think there's a lot of, there's only a few people, rather, that you can think of that you know exactly where you were when you heard the news that they passed away. Older people, you can ask them where they were when Elvis died. A lot of people can tell you. You can, you you know where you were when John Lennon got shot if you were alive during that period. And for our generation, you know where you were when Michael Jack when you found out the news that Michael Jackson had died. Unfortunately, I was in Moorhead. I was in college. I was at a friend's cabin at Cave Run Lake, and I remember exactly what I was doing. I was using the bathroom. I was peeing with with one hand. And then in my other hand, I had my cell phone. And I was just, you know, flipping through my text out of my razor. And I got a text message from a buddy. And it said, all it said was, Michael Jackson died. Sad face. And I said, what? And then I go outside or I go into the living room, turn on the TV. And it said, Michael Jackson hadn't even technically died yet. It said, Michael Jackson severely uh, in critical condition. Yeah, he was, I think, in a, a coma for for a bit. Yeah, so where were you when you heard the news? I was at work. I was at work. And I feel like you and I actually talked on this day. Well, I know that when I found out the news, I immediately started playing Michael Jackson songs with my friends, and we listened to Michael Jackson and the rest of the cookout that we were there. And I just remember, I couldn't believe it. And I remember thinking at that time, I said, this day is going to be a day that nobody forgets. Ten years, Michael Jackson's been gone. We have been without his music for ten years. Say what you want to about the man himself and his personal life. The music that he gave to the world is unlike any other musician or any other artist could ever dream of. He is the only artist that I can put on and dance to every song, sing to every song, and not get tired of doing it. Well, a wise person once told me that they don't trust someone who doesn't at least move when Michael Jackson comes on. And that stuck with me because I was like, you know what? I don't think that I've ever been able to sit still during an entire Michael Jackson song. I mean, who told you that? Um, I think, I mean, I think it was just some random guy that I knew. I think his name might have been Adam Banks, maybe. It's true. If you hear a Michael Jackson song and you look around and you see people not moving or at least bobbing their head to it, something's 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 wrong with them. Something shady going on with you. Yep. Because wrong. regardless of what he did or what he didn't do, he it doesn't change the fact that he was the brilliant most brilliant artist to ever breathe. He was brilliant. The way he would perform everything that went into his performances. He had a very controversial life. You know, we we touched on a lot of the scandal that he had back in the 90s on one of our podcast episodes. So you can go to the iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and listen to the archives. I believe that episode is called... Uh, I think it's Leaving Neverland. No, it's called Smooth Criminal. Was it's it? called Smooth Criminal. It's like episode 250-something, 240-something. It was one of the last uh, podcasts that we done before coming live. Yeah, before doing the radio. So if you want to like get our thoughts on what we think about the whole Michael Jackson trial and the whole molestation, I don't want to go into it now, but you can check out our archives and listen to that but my god what a musical genius he was i just i i it's hard for me to think back in a time in my life where michael's music was not a part of it i guess is the easiest way for me to say it like i if you think back on your childhood i feel like his music has always been dominant in things that i've done he was a very controversial guy but you know who else was a very controversial guy and he's made the news lately because he 
is on Twitter. OJ Simpson, <laughs> Amber, has a Twitter. Orenthal James Simpson, 71 years old. And you might think that nobody's going to follow OJ. Oh, think again. He has just in over a week after signing up. I haven't looked at the most recent numbers. But just after a week of signing up, he had over 800,000 followers. Wow. So he said that the point of him getting a Twitter is to always set the record straight with all these bad rumors going on around him. And he said that he's getting a Twitter to finally be able to have a platform to for people to hear his side of the story. So you obviously, you obviously thought that the first thing he was going to try to address was the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole, and her friend, Ron Goldman. But no. It's the juice. The first thing that the juice decided to address was the fact that he was not Khloe Kardashian's <laughs> father. Like we care. <laughs> But I was like, yeah, I, I would have started with maybe something a little different. Maybe, a, you know, that whole murder case back in 94. Well, I think, you know, right now the Kardashians are extremely popular. So he, need, he needed to tap into that popularity to get that new generation. Because you got to think there's a whole generation of people out there who have honestly not a lot of information about the O.J. Simpson trial. Do you think that people are following O.J. Simpson uh, because they're really fans of O.J.? No. Or are they following O.J.? out of just pure morbid curiosity morbid curiosity why is that I, because i mean you got to think it's one of the it's kind of um an enigma what happened what happened that night yeah what happened well i i love studying about the oj trial that was the trial of the century it was and anybody who has ever studied law they still talk about this case in law schools today the oj trial because it was the first time they really started to use dna evidence and it, it was a groundbreaking trial it was the first ever televised trial all the way through and i watched a little bit of uh, that mini series that came on FX, uh, American Crime, I think is what it was called. It was ra- uh, made by Ryan Murphy. Oh, it was it was an awesome uh, mini series. It was a ten episode docu series on just the uh, scripted docu series on the uh, trial of OJ, and uh, brilliantly played by. Uh, we had Cuba Gooding Jr. Junior. We had David Schwimmer. Who played Marsha Clark? Oh goodness, you would ask me. What is? Her? And I know her name because she's in. She's in all of the American Horror Stories. She is, and she's been married to that old lady. Yeah, that hot that seventy is it year old Sarah woman. Polson. Sarah Polson. There we go. Did you know she's married to a seventy year old lady? I feel like I knew that. Or she's dating a seventy. I, th- I think lady. she's just dating an older lady. Could you imagine, I know this is totally off subject, but could you imagine being like in your 40s and 50s and dating someone that's in their 70s? Do you think, I mean, I know love is love. And you mean like my mother? People have their own thing. <laughs> well, I'm talking just for, do you think that it's for pure, just, do you think they have a connection with those people? I, I, I don't know. Like there's only a six year difference between me and my husband and I sometimes feel like he's ancient and, and it, there's not even that much of an age gap. 819.9 thousand followers for OJ Simpson. Wow. Yeah, at, at this point. But that's that man. That man. He can uh, <laughs> still doing his thing. He's the juice. I don't know what else to say about him. He is. But OJ Simpson, he is on Twitter. So give him a, give him a follow if you want, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure he will set the record straight on a lot of things. In due time. In due time. Well, I did mention that Michael Jackson, it has been 10 years since his passing, so I think it's only fitting, Amber, that when we play Off the Cuff Song of the Week, which is coming up here in about mm, two seconds, (laughs) I think it's fitting that we play a Michael Jackson song. Michael Jackson, there's a lot of controversy surrounding him about his sexuality. And I'm telling you, no, when you hear a guy saying like that, I'm hearing static again. I'm hearing static again. Is there a phone nearby? Get that phone away. Thank you very much. When you hear a... (laughs) (laughs) Guys, he loves to yell at me. Even on my birthday, he'll yell at me. (laughs) I mean, I know it's your birthday, but but I heard static, so I had to call you out. But there is no person that can not be a sexual person and write music like he there did. There is no way that a man wrote that about another man. No. 
Like, that is that is just pure tension between a man and a woman. It truly is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the halfway point of Off the Cuff, so we got to take another quick commercial break, and we will be right back after these words. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in the studio with me. I feel like every week I've talked about the NBA, so this might be the last (laughs) episode that you hear me talk about the NBA for a while because I'm burnt out on it. But the NBA draft happened last week, and I'm here to tell you about the draft results. As expected, NBA uh, has transformed this draft into something that is spectacular. Spectacular. It used to be back in the day. It used to be such a small scale event. It was. It was not even on TV. I don't think. But now it is national across national television. It's the the production of this show is so different from what it was 20 years ago. But as expected, Zion Williamson went number one to the New Orleans Pelicans. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Kentucky players who went in the NBA draft. I think we had a lot of happy Kentucky fans because their boys, as expected, did go in the draft. But before I talk about the UK players. I do want to talk about a Kentucky boy that did not play for the University of Kentucky. He was a racer. You might know him oh, yes. as Ja Morant. Do you remember that guy? Um, no, I'm much older than he is, but I did follow it because of Murray. Well, I didn't think that you were going to say that you were a classmate with him, but you have to know who he is if you know anything about basketball, because last year he was all over the television. He was the Murray State star, and he was chosen by the Memphis Grizzlies. And he averaged 24.5 points, and he was the OVC Player of the Year. I loved it because he represented the OVC. I think that's one of the most underrated basketball conferences in all of college basketball. But yeah, he also won the Lou Olson Award, and that is for the most outstanding non-freshman. And he won the Bob Cousy Award, which is the award given to the top point guard in college basketball. Okay. Yeah, so he got drafted before any any of the Kentucky players did. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think it was like two or three. It might have been even two. I'm not- I wonder if that is... Uh, I'm sure it's not the first person to be drafted from Murray, but I wonder how long it's been like in between people being drafted from Murray. Yeah, it's not every day that you hear Murray no. State being called in the NBA draft. It's really not. But UK had three first-round selections. P.J. Washington, Tyler Hero, and Keldon Johnson. Unfortunately, Reed Travis was there hoping that he would get to hear his name called, but he didn't. So this, after the after this year's NBA draft, it brought UK's total number, total number of lottery selections to 21 under John Calipari. The selections made it 10 straight years all under Calipari that UK has had a player picked in the lottery. So let's talk about P.J. Washington. He was the first of the UK players to hear his name called. He was selected by the Charlotte Hornets, 12th overall. And uh, Hornets general manager Mitch Kupchak said it was like the light went on for Washington after he decided to return to Kentucky for its second season. You know, that just goes to show you, going back to school for a second season when you're not ready after your first, look how much it can benefit you. Look how it benefited oh, yeah. PJ. Well, practice practice really does make make perfect. I mean, he just he wasn't quite ready. Gave it some more practice, and look at him now. Yeah, coming back from coming back for just a year, it improved his draft stock, and he made millions off of it. Tyler Hero was the second UK player to hear his name called. Your favorite player, Amber. Oh, he geez. went to the Miami Heat, thirteenth overall. And Hero said in order to prepare for life in the NBA, he needed to just work on getting stronger. Well, there's also a couple other things you need to work on, Tyler, and Mm -hmm. that's also learn how to do other things besides shoot. Uh, It's called sportsmanship. Learn how to be a team player, my man. (laughs) Keldon Johnson was the third UK player to hear his name called, but not without some confusion. There was some internet confusion. Somebody tweeted out just because they were confused that he was getting drafted before he actually did. 
And again, that's happening too much these days. People are getting, they're hearing their names called uh, maybe after winning an award or a crown or the draft. They're hearing their names called and it's not legitimate. It's yep. it's false because of all technology going on with Twitter and Facebook and everybody's got got an opinion. Everybody got something to say. Everybody's trying to break the story first, so it causes confusion and somehow it wound up on the legitimate ESPN tracker saying that he got drafted, but he didn't. But luckily he ended up getting drafted just like a couple spots after it said it he was supposed to, so it wasn't wasn't like the Miss America pageant when <laughs> okay. she actually had her crown. I had to take it off. And... Yeah, she actually had to have her uh, crown taken off. But he was the third player selected off the board, and he was drafted to the San Antonio Spurs with the 29th overall pick. And he, I've got, if you're interested, I've got what all of these guys are going to be making, what kind of contracts they signed. I would love... Well, Zion Williams is going to be signing an $8.1 million contract. Okay. Ja Morant is signing a $7.2 million contract. Whoa, is that is that the guy from Murray? Yeah, and by the way, he was the second pick in the draft. The and, second, and he signed a contract for $7 million coming out of Murray State, probably living in the same dorms that I lived in when I was there? Yeah, well, yeah. And... He's, they're also Murray will probably count his money as a statistic for what students will make once they graduate. Oh, you know they will. <laughs> and that's not fair because your average Murray State graduate, as you know, is not going to be making $7.2 million a year. They're like me, unemployed. Now, in due time, when Off the Cuff gets out into the stratosphere, I'll pay you $7.2 million a year. I'm going to hold you to that. Well, we've, we've, we've got, we've got, we've got record. a record of that now. We've got record of that. <laughs> P.J. Washington signed a $3.1 million contract. Tyler Hero signed a $3 million contract. And Keldon Johnson signed a $1.6 million contract. And you could tell the later that your name is called, the less and, and less and less the money gets. But who cares? I, 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 all you have to tell me is $1 million. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay. I mean, Keldon, if he... He's like Keldon, for instance, $1.6 million. You manage your money right, Keldon. Mm-hmm. You're never going to have to work for anything else in your entire life. Yep. You're not going to live a life of luxury, but you're going to be able to have a really, really... Decent life. Decent life. Yeah, so congrats to all those UK players. Calipari, he was gl- he was glowing. Draft night to him, he calls it graduation night because he says that's when his players are graduating. And I, like I said on last step on the last episode, he looks at the draft night like winning a championship. That means more to him. Seeing those players get drafted means more to Cal than than anything else. You know, than a final four, than an SEC championship. Than did anything. you see did you see what he done like kind of I think over the weekend and he he had all he said I had my boys over. He had everybody over to his house. They had like a little barbecue in his backyard, everybody in the swimming pool. He said, "You know, sometimes you just got to let them play." Yep. And I was like, that's why you win. You win because of that. He yep. actually cares about each man that steps on to his court. Yep. It's a lot of exciting things going on around that basketball program with Cal there. Speaking of UK, while we're talking about it, Eli Capilouto, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the show, he has become the SEC president. And what that means is he will serve a one-year term as president of the Southeastern Conference, presiding over meetings that make the rules for college athletics at the SEC's 14 member schools. So that is a big deal. I think that's going to help. UK athletics a lot. Having the president of UK also be the president of the entire SEC. I mean, it's either going to help or it's going to create a lot of unnecessary controversy. Because are people going to say that UK is getting unfair treatment because they share? But they could say that about anybody who takes it. They're going to say they favor their university. They probably gave this to this guy because he's probably... he's, He's been voted to be the SEC president. So he had to be voted in by his peers well, I th- to take this job. I, I guess the reason I say that is because people always say that UK fans are the worst, but I also, you know, I personally feel that UK fans are the most hated because we turn out for our team. Yeah. Like, that's what we do. Yeah. And, you know, when they say Big Blue Nation, we really are a nation. Yeah. So I'm just afraid that people are going to say, oh, well, UK is getting unfair advantages now. You know, they got these, you know, these fa- these rude fans, and now they've got this unfair advantage. Like, of course, they're going to win now. You know how people are when people talk. 
I'm just interested to see what happens when he gets in there. You know, that whole alcohol at SEC events, it's still being tabled at UK. The SEC made it legal, so if it's up to each individual university whether or not they want to implement it. But if they want to, they can have alcohol at events. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm not for having alcohol at SEC events. I think it's a shame that there is... People can't go at a place without getting completely hammered and just enjoy. Just enjoy, be in the moment, be present, and be sober. And eat you an ice cream. Yeah, get yep. you an ice cream and an ice cold pop. <laughs> and an ice cold pop. Absolutely. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take our last commercial break and we will be back with our last segment after these words. Take me on a trip, I'd like to go someday. Take me to New York, I'd love to see LA. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Love it when my music skips. There's nothing more in life than I love when my music skips. I love the face you're making right now. <laughs> That's my frustrated face. <laughs> when I, when I, I, are you? Oh, I have to ask. Are you mad at me right now? Yeah, it's your, okay. it's your fault that the music skipped. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Last segment of the hour of Off the Cuff. Thank you for being with us. Child's Play, Chucky, me and you, Amber, we watched that movie. And I don't talk about a lot of movies on this show, but when I like a movie, i got to talk about it. I was a little skeptical going into this movie because I'm a big Child's Play fan of the of the 80s slasher film. I love 80s, that. 80s, 90s slasher, yeah. yep. I was a big fan. But I tell you what, after watching Child's Play last week, I'm a fan. I think they did a good job. Everything about that movie, even the entire experience we had at the theater, I feel like the stars aligned for us. Yeah. The popcorn was hitting. The pop was cold. Our seats were comfy. Yeah. We were just chilling. Yeah, movie I, comes on. I was glad that I didn't overdo it in the theater. Usually, I always overdo it. I buy a pop that nobody in their right mind could drink. I know. I actually got a, a medium. A no, you got a small. You got a small because I was very. I was like, "What are you doing?" I think it was a schmedium because it was. It was kind of schmedium. It was almost a schmedium because it was. It small was short and chubby. And big. Yeah, <laughs> and I also got. I, I, there were so many things. <laughs> there were so many things that I wanted to say after that, but I'm going to let that one go. But I did get to. Um, Eat my popcorn and my M and M's like I always do when I go to the movies. And he did get the popcorn all over me, all over you, and, but not all over the person in front of me like I did at that UK football <laughs> oh game. My gosh. But back to what we were talking about: yes. Child's Play, great movie. What I liked about it was it was more realistic. It was more realistic than what the original was because Child's Play. If you go and watch it, it's basically technology going wrong. Yep. Technology going very, very bad because, and I don't feel like I'm giving anything away when I say this because it's right up front. It's what the movie's about. Yep. It's basically, you know how in the first one, it's, Chucky. It's black magic. It's black it's magic. It's black magic and voodoo and hoodoo and all those things. Chucky becomes a doll because a person transfers his soul into the doll. Yep. Well, in this child's play, it's nothing to do with that. It's realistic. It's basically a disgruntled employee taking the chip that's in the buddy doll and turning off all the safety features, turning off all the emotional intelligence and all that stuff. And then it's a defected Chucky doll that learns behave that it has learned behavior yep. and it watches horror movies and, and listens to bad music and listens to the language that people are saying around it. And then it picks up all of that and it learns it and that's when Chucky becomes evil. Evil. So, I mean, it's not realistic, but it is more realistic than the original. I think it is, because if you think about it, I don't think that they actually intended it, you know, for people to get stuck on the fact that this is, you know, a piece of equipment and it's an electronic. I think what the message that I took away from it is, hey, this is what we're feeding to our growing youth. We are feeding them violence. We are feeding them, you know, negativity. And that's what they're picking up on. So that's why we've got all of these. I I feel we've got all of these outrageous things happening right now in society because this is all learned behavior. We learned over time that it was okay to do that, just like this doll did. Do you know how... Child's Play did at the box office. It opened up against Toy Story, and it came in second 
uh, behind Toy Story, which was expected because Toy Story, you're going to have the parents and the kids well, that yeah. want to go see that. But it has been doing fairly well at the box office. Uh, I recommend people to go out and watch this movie. I think you're going to get a, a kick out of it. It stars Aubrey Plaza as Karen Barkley. She's Andy's widowed single mother. Yep. And Andy is the little boy who obtains uh, the Chucky doll. And then it also stars Mark Hamill as the voice of Chucky. Yep. And he was, he actually was uh, the, he voiced a Chucky role in Robot Chicken. He, have you ever heard of Robot Chicken? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like it's a stoner show. I feel like a lot of stoners watch it. But it's a robot chicken. They had like a child's play Chucky thing, and the guy who did Chucky's voice from that movie was from that. Got to do it. Oh, okay. So good movie. I recommend you go and watch it. But if, it's worth it's worth all your money. It's worth all your money. Have you heard, Amber, about all of these mysterious all these mysterious deaths that's been happening in the Dominican Republic? I have because you know the Dominican Republic is probably I won't say it's my favorite trip that I've ever taken but it's definitely in my top five and unfortunately some of the incidents that have happened um, one of the biggest ones actually originated from the resort that uh, my husband and I stayed at what is going on I, I don't know, you know, somebody gave me some advice when I, you know, because, you know, we travel a lot outside of the country, and I was given a piece of advice by someone that said, you know, when you go, you know, make sure that you're you're diligent in watching your surroundings, and don't participate in a lot of activities, don't drink a lot of the alcohol, because they don't, not just alcohol, but don't drink and eat a lot of the things, especially off the resort, because these people don't have the same rules and regulations that we do. It says here that 10 known U.S. tourists have died at the Dominican Republic uh, resorts, just different resorts, and now over a dozen more visitors fell dangerously ill while they were just vacationing there. They cited symptoms such as abdominal pain, nausea, sweating. Uh, they have complained that in their hotel rooms that they smelled like a chemical gas of some kind. A lot of people complained after having a few drinks from the mini bar, the mini liquor bar from their hotel. Yep. So maybe it's some type of... And you know what's bad? We I'm pretty sure that if you go home and you open up my cabinets, I brought all of our liquor home from not only the Dominican, but from Jamaica and Mexico. We've got all of this, this liquor that we've brought back with us from all of these places. There's something to that when people say don't drink the water in Mexico. Oh, yeah, because they don't, they again, they don't have the same rules and regulations that we do. You know, I see all these people all the time getting up and, you know, parasailing in Mexico. They do not have safety precautions. Don't do that. Melissa Rycroft, she was known for starring on The Bachelor and Dancing with the Stars. Have you ever heard of her? No. Well, she vacationed to the Dominican. She's actually one of the most prominent people to have fallen ill. But she has been sharing to all of her social media sites that she just got back from the Dominican Republic and she's starting to show those symptoms. She went with her family. All of her family is fine except her. But she thinks that because of that, she can pinpoint it to the alcohol that she drank at the mini bar. I would say. And a lot of people have come out with similar stories. So it scares me. I'm about to travel. I'm going on vacation next week. I'm flying. I dread that with a passion. I hate flying by myself. <laughs> I would actually, I don't care who you are. I don't even have to know you. If you want to fly with me to Myrtle Beach, just come with me and fly. I mean, <laughs> you can't stay with me while I'm there, but just come be with me on the plane because I don't want to fly by myself. I really dread that. I know. Yeah, I really do dread just that. Just turn your iMessage on and text me like I texted you. So you can actually text from the plane? Don't you remember? So, you know, uh, I think we were flying American Airlines. I think we went to New York, and they had this big thing like, oh, you can turn your iMessage on. Yeah. And I thought, who better to talk to when I am 36,000 feet above the air than my best friend? Yeah. So we talked, remember, the whole way, me descending. I even told you, hey, man, I'm descending right now. Yeah. And you were freaking out for me. Yeah. I was. So turn your eye message on. As soon as you get up, turn it on. Just the thought of it. It really does. It freaks me out. But I am excited. It's the only way to go because you're there so quickly. You get, I think, Myrtle Beach, Lexington to Myrtle Beach. I think it's 50, an hour. 50 minutes, an hour. Yeah, it's, wheels up, wheels down, an hour. It's in no time. 
It'll and be I, fun. It'll be fun. Just remember, focus. Don't get out of your seat, and make sure that you're paying attention to everybody else getting up. Because if you keep focus, everything's fine. Just be safe out there, folks. When you're traveling, don't drink the water. Make sure that you watch the type of food that you eat. And when you go out of the country and you travel outside of the country, which I think you should just stay in the country. There's a lot of beautiful things here in the country. I disagree. There's a lot of beautiful things in these 50 states that you can see. I don't think right now is the best time to be leaving the country. You know what? If they put a good DR trip on the discount, I am gone. (laughs) Gone. A, A good what? A good DR trip on the discount. A good DR trip. Dominican Republic. If they discount a Dominican Republic trip. I bet you could go to the Dominican Republic right now for like $10 a flight. You know what? If they give me something under like $2,000, i am gone. See me, saw me in the Dominican Republic. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You would really go to the Dominican Republic? You would go with me. It's absolutely beautiful. No, people are dying. It's beautiful. Just go out there, maybe eat a little bread, drink your ice cold pop. Mm. See... I'm talking the language now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, all he likes is a good ice cold pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I tell you what. If you are decide, What is wrong with my technical difficulties over here? I'm having problems again, Amber, and it's really starting to irritate me. I have to ask, are you mad at me? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. just making sure. Even though it is your birthday. It is my birthday. But again, I do want to say happy birthday. Thank you. It's always... You're such a great friend, and I think you should know that. I don't think I tell you that enough. You don't, and that's totally fine because I know it. Sometimes sometimes you'll give me that wink, and I know that'll do, pig. That'll do, pig? That'll do, pig. Babe, don't you remember the movie Babe? Oh, okay. The owner never told Babe he was good, but he would look at him and say, that'll do, pig. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I want to thank you for listening to another episode of Off the Cuff. If you want to follow the show, you can go to facebook.com slash off the cuff with Adam Banks. You could follow me on Twitter at AdamBanks88. Follow me on Instagram at AdamBanks818. Follow me on Snapchat, if you dare, at Adam underscore Banks. Follow Amber on Instagram at Ambu447. Wish her a happy birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, we will not be here next week because we're closed for the holidays but we will be back in two weeks for a fresh new episode of off the cuff as always thank you for tuning in and thank you for listening that is amber turner i'm adam banks and this is off the cuff we'll see you in the next episode